every basic file that you have on your system or a folder that actually is on the system. This is the catalog that has all your metadata in it, the dates and timestamps, and in some cases can contain a file. If the file is below like 931 bytes or so, it can actually fit in the MFT, and you would lose these small text files or these small files without this database. Uh, the other stuff I don't really care too much about till I get to this one called the bitmap file. The bitmap file tells me all the, all the allocated space on the disk. This is, this is the difference between I am not using a 500 gig hard drive, I'm only using 120 gigs of a 500 gig hard drive. This bitmap file basically tells you that. So if you knew that, you could use that and only copy the 120 gigs and not care about the rest of that 400 gigs you didn't get. So, uh, so ultimately we can skip what we don't care about. And uh, this is what it would look like if I took that file, that MFT file, and I parsed it into a database. You could see things like this. This is what my file is. Is it good? What is it? What folder does it point to? What's its parent? And all of its other metadata information. This is what I'm going to focus on, and this is what I'm going to go after. And forget about looking at every single sector. So uh, the bad, badly fragmented stuff, if you really look at this picture, you'll see, like, if I only cared about the allocated stuff, I only need to copy these sectors that are touched or something that I care about. Things like unallocated and all this white space and stuff that's in here, I could just skip that. But I need to know exactly what those sectors are that I want to copy. So there's a tool now that does that. So here's the concept. Basically, I've got a tool. It's going to image the MBR. And this tool is kind of a DOS-based tool, so it doesn't run in Windows. Uh, it's actually talking through hardware directly to the hard drive, and it runs in DOS. So I, I don't have Windows, and I don't have the capability of running some really nice GUI. So what ends up happening is I'm going to have to, if I image the MBR and I want to look at it, I've got to take that drive to a Windows machine and look at it. And then I can go back to this machine and run and continue this process. So I'm going to image the MBR. It's going to tell me what my, parti my partition tables are. It's going to take those partition tables, and it's going to image either I can do just the MFT, or I can do the bitmap, I can do both. I can basically say, just give me allocated files, not all this unallocated stuff I don't care about. And then I'm gonna use Windows to select the folders I care about. So I could actually say, I only want this guy's uh, My Documents folder, and not have to choose anything else, and only image just those sectors, skipping fragmentation, skipping all the other problems, and have one consecutive file that actually makes sense. Uh, I'm going to image it, and then I'm going to restore just those files. So I'm going to try to be surgical and give you a demo of that actually happening. So uh, this is the box I'm using. It's called a DeepSpar Disk Imager, and this is really the first time I've really done one of these hacker talks that's on a specific piece of hardware. It's a good concept tool, though. It does a lot of diagnostics and a lot of other things. So I think that this is really important, and it would be you know, great to kind of expound upon all the features, and maybe at some point in time other tools will do something similar. But, uh, but this is a fantastic tool. It's not cheap, though. It's about 3500 But if you're going to run a data recovery business, this will pay for itself in two or three recoveries. You'll be done. Uh, not to mention that if you're doing something in an organization where time matters, you know, you're on an oil rig, and you have one hour to do a recovery, this will be the process that will basically save your life in a situation where you know, maybe they didn't have a backup. So, uh, so I'm going to give you a demo now. So I'm going to switch to the machines. The MFT doesn't. Ah, my machine's now shutting down. Isn't that great? Um, all right. So while that reboots, uh, the so what he said is that uh, there's a backup of the MFT. There's not actually a backup of the MFT itself. The MFT uh, there is a MFT mirror, and the MFT mirror uh, is only the first four records. It's basically located. Uh, the center of the disk minus a couple of bytes, uh, and basically it is a pointer back to the original records of where the beginnings of the records are. It's basically for single sector failure to basically get rid of the fact that if I had a single sector that failed, I could at least find the records that I cared about and point back to them. Um, but that's that's about it. It's not a complete backup. So. If you end up, like an MFT being a small database or something, basically if you needed to, um, it would be very small in nature. It would be, you know, maybe 300 megs or something for a very large drive. <clears throat> so, 
So what I'm using here, basically, if this thing comes up fast enough, I can show you. Um, I've got this box, and this box, this black box, is just in a regular computer. And this box is the boot drive. It is actually the boot device for the computer. There is no Windows drive. There is no other drive. It is a flash device, and it is the boot device. And this boot device, this boot device is then connected to the source drive, whatever the bad drive is. And let me see if I can show you what it is. Yeah, well, video's not coming up. Uh, poor C. Yeah, something always blows up. All right, so that's not critical anyway. So basically, I've got a source device on this left-hand side, and I've got a destination drive on the right-hand side where I'm going to clone my data to. And so this black box is the boot device. And so it boots, and when it boots, it looks like this. Now, this device can do a couple of things, uh, but basically it can do some diagnostics and stuff. I'm not going to go too far into that, but I'm going to apply power on this box, and this box will uh, start up, and it will begin by trying to mount the drive. It does not, it's, it's basically still a read-only device. All it's going to do is look physically at the device itself and see if, there's a, if it can actually uh, seek the drive. So when I hit F11, you'll actually see it like come up and it'll go busy in the top corner, and then it'll come to drive seat complete and drive ready. That's typically a good signal to me. It's kind of like a, a modem, a courier modem or something that would actually come back and tell you my drive is actually ready to communicate with. And I can do other things, like I actually have like an oscilloscope monitor that I can monitor the 5 and 12 volt current so I can see what kind of thing is actually happening on the device. Uh, so you can actually see it during its power cycle when it comes back on, spindle spins up and heads move, and whether or not the PCB board actually has a processor that's locked on it. So I can tell a lot of things like that. Um, normally, <clears throat> at this point, I would be able to do a list of the drives. I can see my source drive. The serial numbers and LBA numbers are really good signs. That means at least the drive can mount. Even if I have a lot of damage, I can actually see that the device is physically working, even if I've had to repair it or something to get to this point. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I start the device, and it knows that there's no configuration. So I've got to actually go through this process of, well, do I want an MFT? So I'm going to focus on that particular item. Um, there is an item on the menu that's called data, and I can select the area that I want to image. So this is completely for dealing with this MFT. All I want to do is copy the MBR and the catalog for the partition that I want. That's it. I don't want anything else at this point. I don't want any files. I don't want to recover anything. All I want to do is copy, say, the small 300 meg database off of the computer. So when I select my imaging area, you'll see it will initialize a map. The map is actually being written on the destination disk. It's not being written on the original. It's not making any changes to it. It's not spin right. Um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> so, uh, so it is writing all of its configuration information on the destination disk. So it made a small map, and now it's telling me, oh, look, I've identified from the MBR that I have a partition. And I can select that partition. Once I select the partition, now I'm saying, well, what do I want? What do I want to get? Normally, I might say I want something uh, like all files and bitmaps from the MFT record because that's basically what I would focus on, but then I could whittle it down from there. But that's all I want this machine to do at the moment is to go and grab this particular item. So when I hit enter, it's going to actually read just the MFT from the drive and nothing else. So it's going to start cloning the MFT wherever those components are. And you'll actually see it fly through the whole drive and say, oh, look, I copied the MFT and I got the bitmap file. So I got those two things. That's all I want from the drive at this point in time. Now that's cloned to the destination disk. Now the destination disk, if I was using Windows and I plugged this drive into a Windows machine, the MBR basically tells Windows, the master boot record, tells Windows, I got a partition and it's an NTFS partition. Please mount me. Look at my files. And that causes that little bar to spin and look at all your files and then give you a list that you can actually do something with. I don't want Windows to look at this. There are no files on this machine. If I had something on this drive that was old data or something else that was corrupt data, it would just cause Windows to blue screen, right? So I don't want Windows to look at it. So we have a function in here that basically turns off the MBR, turns off the partition table. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, at the end of a partition table, you have the two bytes, 55AA. Well, it basically changes it to 55BB so that there is no partition flag. So, uh, so I'm going to go 